You've lived all over the world and written a story about a woman who didn't travel far physically, but quite far in her imagination. What was that like? How do you think the Brontes developed this startling imagination? I don't know that one has to travel very far to write a book, actually. Uh, and I sometimes say that to my students when they think that their own lives are not interesting. I think everybody's life is interesting to some extent if you're able to tell it, of course. And then, of course, the Brontes were great readers. And this is very stimulating to the imagination. And then Charlotte did have the experience of going to Brussels where she fell in love with her professor. Uh, Monsieur Eger, and that was an extremely important event in her life, and certainly, I think, fueled a great deal of the love story that we find in Jane Eyre. So they they travelled in uh, through literature. They were, you know, great readers. They did do some travelling, and then, of course, they had one another. I imagine that was very stimulating to be able to share their stories with one another. What intrigues me in your novel, Becoming Jane Eyre, is the relationship among the sisters, famous literary sisters who share a passion for writing, the hardships of their home life, and the feelings of loss and pain regarding their other siblings. What stays with me is that scene with Charlotte, Emily, and Anne when they receive a note of interest from a publisher for their novels, but only by two of the three sisters. Can you talk about the Bronte sisters and what was it like to shape your story with their sisterhood in mind? Mm. Well, sisters have always been very important to me. I had one sister who actually died uh, very tragically when she was very young. Uh, so I've written again and again about uh, lost girls, and that's always been a theme of great interest. So I think I responded particularly to these three who, as I say, were able to share their work with one another in this wonderful way. Then, of course, there are the disadvantages uh, of writers in the same family. And I also have a writing daughter, so I know what these are. And when you get writers together, there's always a certain amount of competition. So I was particularly interested in the scene where they had sent the three, because they put their three novels together. There was The Professor, which was uh, Charlotte Bronte's first book, uh, Wuthering Heights, and then Agnes Grey. Um, and they sent the three volumes out, uh, and it kept coming back, until finally Newby, who was a rather unscrupulous publisher, uh, read them, and but quite rightly realized that it was the two novels, Wuthering Heights, of course, and Agnes Grey, but Charlotte's the Professor was really not good enough. Uh, and even today, although we read The Professor with great interest, I don't think we have the same kind of passionate response as we do to Jane Eyre. Anyway, I, he then said, I'll take two, but not three. Uh, so it was a huge dilemma. And I could just imagine these three very upright moral girls having to decide what to do. And of course, well, anyway, in my version, of course, we don't know exactly what they said to one another. We only know the end result. And I imagine Charlotte saying, you know, oh, well, you must go ahead and publish yours because it's the only offer we've had. Because she was fair and just. But in her heart, she must have wanted them to say, uh, no, we won't. We'll find a publisher who will only take the three of them. Um, but of course, they didn't. And they took rather unfavorable terms, too, because they had to actually pay for the publication of their books and would only receive the money if a certain number of copies were sold. So they did. So that was really a scene where I felt there must have been jealousies. And then, of course, there were all the problems afterwards with the fact that Jane Eyre received such glowing reviews and Wuthering Heights was criticized. As, but Agnes Grey was sort of ignored, which was probably worse than all. But uh, poor Emily suffered terribly in comparison, her reviews in comparison with Charlotte's. And when she died, they found in her desk two or three reviews where her book was just compared unfavorably to Charlotte's, which I felt very sad. Mm. Branwell, the only brother of the Bronte sisters, is a source of constant pain and anguish, and yet still he received unconditional love from his family. In your novel, you write about their father's cry of, my son, my son, over Branwell's death. What were your thoughts about writing this character, and how did resources inform your depiction of Branwell in particular? 
Well, I think, you know, it's been pretty well researched. And actually, Daphne du Maurier uh, wrote a biography of Branwell. She's not someone who one thinks of as a biographer, but it's a very interesting one. I don't know if it's very accurate or not. And of course, a lot of people have written about Branwell. Um, and he's, of course, the ne'er-do-well character in a way, because he must have been very promising as a writer too. And although they never included any of his poetry, and one wonders why they didn't, um, when they published their poems, because Branwell, of course, had written a lot of poetry, uh, but Charlotte did not include his poetry in that. Uh, whether they were afraid that he might in his cups, because he was so often drunk or drugged, you know, opium was very easy to to get at the pharmacy. You could just pay your money and you got your opium. And so uh, whether they were afraid he might be indiscreet at some point, uh, I don't know. Anyway, he was definitely... A fascinating character to me uh, and I think remained probably I mean Charlotte adored him and Emily right until her death adored him I think Charlotte turned against him at one point perhaps because she had loved him so much and then perhaps he was too similar to her in a way a very passionate nature so I felt there was a great source of heat in Branwell and that he lies behind many of their male characters, like Heathcliff, perhaps some elements of Branwell are in that, as even the mad wife, of course, for Rochester, has some elements of Branwell.